Hey everybody, this is Libby. Libby just saw a bird outside the window. You noticed her eyes just went straight to it. So this little kitty was once a very feral cat. She didn't have a very good childhood. And now she does have a good life. And like so many abuse survivors of neglectful parents, verbally abusive parents, narcissistic mothers, the worst, especially the stay at home ones like I had, I'm starting to view them as actually demonically possessed. And we're gonna go into that. <laughs> and I also have a nice compilation in my notebook here. Um, and we're gonna go into all kinds of things. I was told I was selfish for having needs. I was told I was too much. I was a complainer. If I expressed preferences, I was called beggars can't be choosers. So we were gonna talk about Erickson's, um, Eric Erickson's stages of development. You can go on to it uh, for now. It's open to interpretation, I certainly have, but um, another person talks about uh, the adult child syndrome and there's ACA, Adult Children Anonymous. There are uh, healing groups for that. Also, you could go to Adult Children of Alcoholics because if your parent wasn't an alcoholic, she was a rageaholic like mine. If she didn't rage, she wasn't alive. He talks about infancy and then the home child and then the personality develops. But in mine, where I'm going with it is Let's find out where I was. I'm doing a lot of work. It helps too. I'm just showing you, showing you an example of the notes that I take during my um, healing process so that you get a sense yourself of uh, how you can actually get through your life. Because healing from... A bad childhood, a childhood that was orchestrated by a wicked demon in the, in the body of your mother, who you've been brainwashed to love, is really challenging. So in Eric's Erickson's development, I am specifically considered with a three to five years old. This is the initiative versus the guilt. I felt get bad for having needs. And I would want to initiate things but become thwarted by her. It creates a sense of purpose in your life. So if you were uh, misdirected, redirected, uh, under the gun, um, literally or figuratively, hit, beat, punished for existence, maybe you didn't have a purpose. And so we're going to talk about this in um, stage four as well, which is this. these three two were crucial. And of course, my mother completely ruined me when I um, attempted to, when I graduated high school, it's because she's a devil. If you don't take it personally, you realize it's evil trying to thwart and prevent good from manifesting. You're the good thing. Your mother, the narc, is the awful, evil thing. The opposite of evil is live. It's time for you to live. Live your life. Live your purpose. So between 5 and 12, industry versus inferiority, and it creates competency. So at the age of 5, I had a huge toxic shock from the, the uh, B-I-T-C-H demon that embodied my mother. And then uh, we'll talk about this later. Right now we're going to talk about 3 to 12. Your purpose and your competency, how your parent undermined you, how she redirected you away from your skills and abilities, 
Bring out your notebook. Write it down. They like to create a negative intent and identity. Eventually. That's their favorite thing. Narcs love it. Why are they doing this? Why are they stunting it? Well, they use a lot of criticism and control because if they're narcissistic, that's all they have going on in their stupid heads. This gives the children a feeling of guilt just for being alive, for the very self of who they are. They feel like they're a nuisance to others. And their personal initiative is... Sabotaged by the terrible human being posing as their mother that's actually a demon. And we're going to talk about demonic possession. Now, the narc mom um, did punish personal initiative. I also could not have what other kids had. And I was told I didn't deserve it. And what did I do to deserve it? Between 5 and 12, that's in industry versus if inferiority. And it leads to competency if it's positive. So my peer group is who built my self-esteem. They were safe. My home was not. I learned competence and competency because I went to a public school. So I know that people are in favor of homeschooling, and I do see the place for it. However, if I had been homeschooled by a narcissistic mother, I wouldn't be alive today because I wouldn't be able to stand myself. Now, the parental messaging I received is that I was a bad, undeserving, in, inferior person, that I was inadequate and unworthy. Did I mention incompetent? What's wrong with me? No idea. All I know is that I have to learn how to break toxic conditioning. And the way I get to it is accept it. I have to accept I was born into a really toxic family. I have to accept a demon wants to keep me from showering my gifts on the world. Only if I allow that to happen will I cease to have my purpose, which is to help other women heal themselves and recognize that that narc mother was the biggest challenge any sweet child of God could possibly have ever had. So you're going to, the grief comes in cycles. I cry in the shower a lot. But reframe things. That demonic thing that's called your mother wasn't trying to hurt you specifically, so it's really not personal. They hate themselves so much. They are demonically influenced. And essentially, you were born as a child of God into a family where the devil and the demon influenced this wretched person that then went on to shape your psyche. You're going to learn your own inner authority, and you're going to kill that false self that she created that says you're worthless. Everybody else gets to make a paycheck. Everybody else gets to make a living. Everybody else gets to have love in their life. Everybody else gets to have people think they're really uh, not such a bad person. Hey, you're kind of cool, cat. But not when you have a mother like that, and not if you let it run in your head. You got to get rid of it. You got to kill the false self. None of that's true. You are loving and a deserving of a life like everybody else. So piece yourself to get back together again. Re-navigate your purpose. Adjust your North Star and your compass to what it is that you want to ha have happen in your life. Again, you're serving a higher calling. So it's not like you're being selfish. It's not like you want gold and diamonds and furs and things, if you want to actually be okay with being okay with who you are. Learning to have a conversation again. So you might want to join the adult child um, anonymous or the adult children of alcohol, just so you can air. So navigate your life journey and path. And, you know, your perspective change helps your healing. Again, my mother is demonically possessed. She's not normal. She'll never be normal. She doesn't care who I am. I am a threat to her, and it's not personal. Does the demon really care about the goodness of God's children? No. The demon would love it if that child fell into disrepair and went down the drain, and that way the demon can laugh, because that's the demon's goal. 
essentially, she's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And what I had lacking for me in my life was words of encouragement and correct direction. I had the very opposite. So put yourself together, everybody. Get yourself a notebook. Write some stuff down. Get to work. Healing is hard stuff. Self-repair. We're in narcissistic abuse recovery. And flying solo right now is the easiest way for me to do it. I am not interested in having a relationship because most people seem to be unaware of the fact that they're all damaged goods out there in single land. You have to put yourself together. It's a scenic overlook and a loving opportunity to get your life right. And your life without a narc in it, narc in it or a man who adds to your problems rather than making things either neutral or taking problems away, you're better off without one. So you're doing self-healing with a narc abuse escapee. Discovery, grief, and recovery. Recapitulation and reframing. Get yourself a notebook. Write your little heart out. Sending love. It's all good.